Now in this video, I'm gonna give you everything you need to know about the new Edge 540 and 840 in under five minutes. Uh, seven minutes. Including the differences, what's brand new about them, all the goodness. So the very first thing to know is that both units are identical in case size and a bit chubbier than in the past. However, only the Edge 840 has a touchscreen display versus the Edge 540 has buttons only. The key thing though is that both units now have the same buttons versus in the past, they were different buttons. Now the biggest hardware change beyond that though is the fact that there's now a solar edition of each one. That's a little red section right there. Uh, it's on the outside edge at 100% photovoltaic level and then across the entire display at 15% photovoltaic level. Now as you're riding along, I'm just gonna show you the solar gains on the screen right there, a new data page for the solar additions. However, it's not actually adding that much because if you rode for four hours and you gained 26 minutes, you still lost three and a half hours of battery or like roughly 6% or so, give or take. Now, for context, just before I started filming this, I topped off uh, the Edge 840 from like 1 or 2% up to 11%. It took me like 7, 8 minutes in total. So, yeah, it's, it's not great. But if you do ride in the sun a lot and you ride for a long time, it could be kind of useful. What is more useful for most people though is the new multi-band GPS. You can see here at the top there's the GPS option right there. And if I go and swipe down, I see the same thing here. A new multi-gene SS, multi-band, otherwise known as dual frequency GPS. This is the highest level of GPS accuracy out there today in the consumer market. And it's very, very accurate. That's like the long, the short version. Full details my full review, but it's basically spot on, just like the Edge 1040 was last summer. Also spot on, the battery claims, uh, and actually they're even under, if you will, they're more conservative than my testing has shown. Uh, by and large, I'm blowing away all the battery claims on the chart that you see right there. Instead, it's the software changes that are most notable here. The biggest being the new Free Ride Climb Pro mode. Uh, essentially, it's gonna show you the ascent and the remaining distance and the overall elevation that you have to go up and suffer through until the top of the climb. But it does this automatically without any courses loaded. In the past, you had to have a course loaded, now you no longer have to have a course loaded. Overall, it works pretty darn well as long as the road only like ends one place. When there's like a split, it's gonna try to use heat maps or popularity routing to figure out where you will probably go based on where other cyclists went. And like 89% of the time it's correct and about you know, 10, 20% of the time it just ends the climb too early because I take a different turn or a different route. Now, as you're probably seeing, this is an entirely different user interface than it has been in the past. Uh, so this user interface mirrors that of the Edge 1040 and overall it works great on the Edge 840. It's super easy to use. In fact, it's even easy to use on the Edge 540 pre-ride and post-ride and while you're just riding along. But I found that while I'm riding along and try to change any setting on here, like go into a menu and toggle something or go and access some other portion, it's just kind of cumbersome with the buttons, which is something I don't remember being a problem on the Edge 530 that was button only. I think this user interface is designed primarily for touch. In this case, trying to conform it to buttons hasn't quite worked out as well as Garmin probably wanted to on the 540. But hopefully that's something they can tweak and finesse over time uh, to kind of like get those edge cases a bit more polished so it just is easy to use as the touchscreen version. Now you're gonna find a ton of new training focused metrics here. Uh, so for example, in the home screen, you'll find training status 2.0, you'll find acute load, uh, also the ability to like judge you as a cyclist called cyclist ability, figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are. You also can go ahead and now put an event or a race on your calendar, it'll build out an entire training plan for you. You'll even see the different phases there, the base phase, build phase, peak phase, taper phase, the exact event date, the recovery phase, and then it gives you exact workouts every single day and what to do. And if you're wearing a Garmin wearable and you don't sleep enough last night, or you take a red eye flight, whatever the case may be, it'll automatically change your schedule based on that. Now, once you do get to that race or kind of big event, there's the power guide. Power guide is new from the 1040 as well. And it basically gives you power targets to hit based on the course that you load into it. So it looks at the exact course elevation profile and then gives you the power targets based on the time that you want to hit. Uh, overall, it's pretty cool. You can see it right here on the screen on our course that I did, give me power targets, in this case, up some cobblestone sections. Essentially, if you're familiar with best bike split, it's sort of like that, but just not with as many so you might ask, what are the differences in total between the Edge 840 and 540? And there are seven, seven differences in total. Uh, number one is that obviously the Edge 840 has a touchscreen, the Edge 540 does not. Number two, the Edge 840 has 32 gigs of storage versus 16 gigs on the 540. That actually matters now because the maps are way, way bigger uh, than they were in the past to account for all that new on-demand Climb Pro data. Basically, with a 540, you're only getting one region on there at a time. So all of North America or all of Europe, but not both versus with the 840, you can outfit both regions. 
Speaking of which, number three here, the 840 comes preloaded with two regions of maps versus the 541 region. You can download for free other regions and swap them out. So the data is all there. You just have to download and do the whole dance if you need to. Number four, the 840 can do specific address search on the device itself. I mean, you can put 123 Maple Street in there and it'll go and route to that location. The 540 cannot do that. Next, a trivial one. The 840 has the trail forks. Those are the mountain biking maps pre-activated versus the 540. You have to activate them. They're both free either way. You just have to like a couple extra button presses on the 840. Number six, the 840 has the ability to go ahead and build a structured workout on the unit itself versus the 540 you have to download it too. And you can of course download structured workouts to both. Uh, but if you want to build a custom workout step by step, you don't want to do that. Trust me. You do not want to try and build a complex multi-set custom workout on this device itself. That's what your phone is for and then send it to the just trust me on this one. And of course, the last difference is that the 840 costs 100 bucks more. It costs 100 bucks more, whether it be the solar edition or the non-solar edition in comparison to the 540 unit. So then you may be asking yourself, what is the difference between the 1040 and the 840 at that point? Uh, and the answer is simple, hardware. That is it. Feature software wise, the 840, the 1040 will become identical with the next firmware update for the 1040. They'll be 100% the same, uh, but the 1040 has a bigger display, it has 64 gigs of storage, uh, and it's just simply a bigger unit overall and has more battery life, and, and that's it. So ultimately, what do I recommend? Well, I would say at this moment, the 840 is sort of the sweet spot right here. Uh, and that's mainly because of the touchscreen display there over the 540. In the past, I've always recommended the 5X series, but I find that the buttons here just aren't quite where I want them to be, like in the user interface as of today, maybe that'll improve. Uh, and then of course, you do have the 1040 if you simply want a larger screen. I like this unit, I've been using it for the last year. It's awesome really just up to you and how much money you have. Now, if you found this interesting and want more information, check out my full reviews on both of those up in the corner, the 540, the 840, and the 1040 for that matter. Uh, all of them are there, we'll be there shortly. With that, have a good one.